Hi, I'm Greg Gutfeld, or as I'm known in Japan, Greg Gutfeld. <laughs> Yay! Here's what's coming up. Chicago protests Friday night. Shut down Trump rally. That ain't right. Note, for good exercise, try flying a kite. What happens now on the campaign trail? Will it get worse, or will cooler heads prevail? I don't know. And does Hillary have your trust to be president? Isn't it a must? My bicycle is starting to rust. I've missed you, America. Let's get started. I've got nude Twister at Hemmer's in an hour. <laughs>Let's welcome tonight's guest, shall we? They had to buy his baby clothes at the Big and Tall store. It's Tyrus, TNA wrestler and our big news correspondent. Yeah. That's his real beard. And she's so bright, children are told not to stare directly at her. It's Jillian Turner, former National Security Council member in the Bush and Obama administrations and a Fox News contributor. He's more shocking than a hair dryer dropped into a tub full of electric eels. Sit down! It's Gavin McInnes, host of The Gavin McInnes Show. Thank you. He's in a new movie called Creative Control. It's now in some theaters. Many theaters. Yeah, shut 11. up. Shut up! She's as bubbly as champagne because she's been drinking it since noon in the parking lot. Joanne Osichinski. And last but not least... She puts the Miz in misery. National Review reporter Catherine Temp. Boo. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. All right. So it was just another typical Friday night in America. <laughs> a fist fight festival erupted in Chicago after Donald Trump canceled a rally where raucous protesters invaded the arena. Organizers feared violence. I'd say the fear was well founded. Police arrested five people during isolated brawls. So who are these people protesting? Fox News, Fox this News, Fox News, Fox News. You've been Fox having Fox News, Fox News, Fox News, Fox News, Fox News. Fox news. Can, you, can you say something? Uh, Fox <laughs> News. I think he's got a future as my ringtone. <laughs> Fox News, Fox News, Fox News, Fox News. Can Where's my phone? Anyway, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, sorry I interrupted you, protester. Please continue. I'm here because I'm proud to be a Chicagoan, because uh, Chicago does not like Donald Trump and his uh, ideas. That's college today. <laughs> what can you say? Yes. Now, reporters said the protesters were a mix of Bernie Sanders supporters, Black Lives Matter, and MoveOn.org. But to me, it looked like a face-off between Skinner fans and Greenpeace interns. <laughs> so why were they protesting? John Roberts, ask him what they're doing here and why. What were you here tonight to do? I'd rather not answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so these protesters won't express themselves on camera, but they will happily silence everyone else. The media described the protesters as peaceful after the event was shut down. The message, you'll get peace if you shut up. The left <laughs> suppresses speech through disruption. Oh, they will preach dialogue unless it happens to involve you. But shouting we won after silencing others only says you're a wimp. And it helps Trump, not the protesters, exposing the intolerant PC movement in full glory. Trump had this to say today. We cannot let our First Amendment rights be taken away from us, folks. We can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. We have a right to speak. I mean, we are law-abiding people. We're people that work very hard. We're people that have built this country and made this country great. And we're all together. And we want to get along with everybody. But when they have organized, professionally staged wise guys, we've got to fight back. We've got to fight back. You see how white his background was? Clearly a racist. <laughs> his opponents say this. When you have a campaign that affirmatively encourages violence, you create an environment that only encourages this sort of nasty discord. There are consequences to these words. There really are. Presidents and presidential candidates cannot just say anything they want. Frankly, uh, uh, Donald has created a very toxic environment. What was the question? Anyway, <laughs> here are my thoughts. Yeah, I saw the fights at the rally 
over and over and over again. I saw more of this guy than I saw my family the entire year. <laughs> it's bad, but the fact is we keep seeing the same footage because we happen to like it, more so than a John Kasich town hall, which got knocked off TV for this. It aired later, but the most restrained candidate running gets bumped for behavior seen during spring break. So where should you stand in all of this? Are you for Trump or are you for the protesters? Should Trump be blamed or should Bernie Sanders, since many of the protesters back him? I say everyone's at fault. The protesters more so because they came probably for a fight. But this lady didn't help. You have the right to assemble. You have the right to free speech. You also have the, you right, have the right to go to into. A guy you have a right protesting. to go into. Listen, you go, have a right to go into a closed private event, and you get what, what's coming to you. I do not what's condone violence, but if you go into an environment where you're interrupting 13, 14 times, do you expect a hug or kumbaya? Oh, Marosa. This is my problem with Trump. I don't want a White House where washed up reality show minions actually have a voice. I do not look forward to Gary Busey's take on entitlements or, or Sinbad's policy suggestions for Syria. Also, Bill Ayers was there. He's a terrorist. He tried to blow up Americans. Was he there to preach nonviolence? That's like Jeffrey Dahmer preaching veganism. <laughs> I go by the Bill Ayers rule. If he shows up to support a cause, you must embrace the opposite. After all, why do protesters who claim to despise hate seem, like Bill Ayers, to love violence? Because to them, they're good and we are evil. Finally, I wonder, did anyone see this coming? It could get uglier, and we don't want it to get uglier, do we? But we, it could. It really could. We're watching tempers flare everywhere, not just between left and right, between right and right. And until we actually kind of like speak honestly about what's going on, it's going to get bad. Mm, bright guy. <laughs> Pretty good looking, too, I might add. I think he works out. Anyway, I'm thinking cooler heads better pre prevail soon or it's going to get worse, really worse. <laughs> I want to start with you, Tyrus. Tyrus, you, um, you were a, a bouncer for Snoop. You're a wrestler. Bodyguard. Bodyguard. Bouncer. Bouncer, same like thing. Intern. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> you were his intern. Executive protection, if you want to be cool about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm sensing a pattern here that seems to be getting worse. Am I right or am I worrying? No, it's about to get, it's about to get ugly. Yeah. Um, I think people are angry. People are using Trump as the vehicle for their... For, and it's not, I don't really think it's even about him. Mm -hmm. um, the protesters, and they're not really protesters, they're invaders. Because when you protest something, if I don't like the Greg Gutfeld, I will take a sign and sit in the front row right there and be like, I don't like Greg. Yeah. And I, it's my right to do that, and you can do your show. Yeah. And we know you're sensitive and you'd probably be <laughs> upset, but I can protest it, and it's cool. That's yeah. protest. But me coming over your desk and going like that while you talk, that's yeah. not a pro I'm invading your space, and eventually you're going to go, stop taking my desk. And then I'm like, what'd you say to me? And then we're going to have a fight, and then I'm on TV. So maybe I should do that, but the message is lost, and it's not protesting. Yeah, that's it's true. A, it's not protesting. By the way, I enjoyed it when you did that. It was kind of, it was like a nice little thigh massage. Uh, <laughs> Jillian, Tyrus makes a good point that, uh, I be, that we keep showing this stuff. We keep deploring it and deploring it and deploring it, but then we keep showing it and showing it and showing it. It's almost like, I mean, we know violence is a contagion. Uh, uh, if we keep doing this, are we uh, creating more of a problem? Should we ignore it? I don't know. It's a, t a catch-22 for the media. As much as I hate these, you know, blame the media for everything argument, I think we have the same argument in the foreign policy community about terrorism. Yeah. Should we air the videos of the beheadings and the threats yeah. from ISIS or should we not? This reminds me of that a little bit because it's like, are we promoting this mm -hmm. by talking about it? I think the media ultimately has a responsibility, though, to show the American yeah. people in this country what's happening, and that's what happened here. Kudos, it, it pains me to do it, but kudos goes out to the Trump campaign, though, for making the right call last night and canceling. Yeah, I think that was a smart and move. And gaining even more exposure as a result. <laughs> exactly. Well, but think how much more exposure they would have had if they had gone forward with it and people were beating the crap out of each other yeah. all night. I think it helped them in yeah. a big way. Yeah. Imagine this. If they just blurred out the heads of the guys on the TV, yeah, the the brother who was ducking in the glasses and doing his thing to give, if his heads blurred out, yeah, then he, he didn't get any attention. Exactly. The, we see what happens. But you know what? That's in, that's uh, offensive. Because the next town, the guy might be like, "Well, we're not going to get any, you know, my blog's not going to get any hit points because yeah. we're not going to see my face on it." Yeah. Because that's what it's really about. But what about people?
Oh. Yes. But what about people whose heads are already blurry? Have you thought about them and how offensive it is to them? Well, you'll save money on the tech. You, you unblur their heads so they're unrecognizable. Gavin, good to see you. Dressed Natalie, as always. Natalie? Oh, Natalie Portman. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yes. All right. Whenever there's a movement, there's extremists, right? Yeah. I, I, have to, I can't be a hypocrite. I went after Occupy Wall Street all the time for the assaults and the molestations. And things. I feel that I have to call that out when that happens, in, even in events that I might favor, correct? Correct. Well, these people are way bigger cretins than Occupy Wall Street. They had one defecator and a couple idiots. But this is full-on <laughs> morons. Who are you talking about? The protesters. Oh, I wanted to be clear. Yeah. I was at what did the Trump people do? Look at the fights. It was all the protesters. Yeah. And even uh, I saw some idiot standing in front of the cops going like this with their hands up going, in your face, pigs. Yeah. And you go, that's what we want, dummy. Mm -hmm. Like, you might as well eat a Big Mac in front of Ronald McDonald and go, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> I'm eating a Big Mac. And he's like, yeah, I made that for you. That's what I, I want to see your hands. <laughs> jo Joanne, um, um, let's bring up Omarosa. OK. All right. <laughs> This is my, my problem is that when there is a movement and people sense that there's power, it brings, uh, it brings people together that are looking for power. She like, she's, seems like somebody that sees this as an opportunity for herself and she says stupid things. Oh yeah, well I think we all see the opportunity in everything. Like Tyrus was saying, when you can get that extra blog hit or you can get that exposure, you're going to do so, but mm -hmm. which makes it obvious that this is not about the protest. Again, like Tyrus was saying, it's, it's about, I don't know, it, taking that opportunity and really just like running with it mm -hmm. and seeing how far you can go. Because really, if they were trying to just stop a speech, as soon as they did, they would have left. Mm -hmm, that's true. Yeah. But it no longer became about that. They just wanted to stay. Yeah. Because they wanted more exposure. It, it, you know, it was like a carnival atmosphere. I think I coined that phrase. Uh, <laughs> Kat, you were part of the Barbie riots of 72. Um, how does this compare? I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> although, I, the protesters, I kind of get it. I was a little jealous of Trump because that's a lot of attention. <laughs> I would love to have people to, that would text me back, you know, let alone get have that many feelings about me being somewhere. Um, <laughs> when I watched that, though, it looked like Twitter in real life, right? Yeah. That's been going on on Twitter all this time, and it just happened right there in front of real life. And it was amazing. And I was watching it all night in my apartment, and definitely because I care so much about the history and not because I didn't have any other plans <laughs> and <laughs> was going to watch New Girl otherwise. <laughs> Definitely yes. not. Yeah. Okay, if, you know what? It's weird. When there's something like that on, it makes being alone watching TV like work. It's like, wait, hey, I, wait, I'm actually I'm doing something. I'm researching. I'm yes. not crying. I'm researching. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to those German websites over and over again anymore. Well, no. there's commercial breaks. Yes, that's, well, yeah, I do that as well. All right, we got to take a break. Up next, absolutely nothing about Donald Trump. But first... What did the president say about Donald Trump? I bet it wasn't something complimentary.